All right, today I'm gonna to be showing you guys my latest creation. This is my destroyer mech. This is the second video in the series. The first video is a short film where the mech destroys a village. In this video, I'll be showing you guys the sing in action and how it works. In the third video, we'll see the conclusion to the short film. So let's see this in action. All right, so this thing moves, it walks, and I think it looks pretty realistic. The way that, you know, one leg lifts up the whole thing and it just moves forward. I think this is probably one of the most realistic uh, ways of walking, and it's much more realistic than my uh, my last walker. Anyway, so this thing, you can see it turn. Um, it's not the most realistic turn, but it gets the job done, right? So I actually had a more realistic way of turning, um, and I made a little prototype here. So you can see there's these two uh, variants right here. So with this, you can kind of just, you know, turn the legs around like this and vice versa. But things got kind of complicated. So when you try to uh, walk forward, well, what happens is that, you know, well, that's a bit of an issue. But it, the whole thing also turns upside down. So if this thing was to be automated with some uh, furnace, uh, not furnace engines, but fan engines, um, it would be a little bit complicated and it would take up quite a bit of room. So um, I decided uh, not to include this in my final design for this build. I might include it in another design, maybe if I made a bigger walker where I had uh, a bit more space available. So back to the build. So yeah, so this thing, we've seen it move. We've seen it walk forward a little bit. But, you know, I think the most important thing is let's see the let's see the TNT cannons on these things so if you saw my last video you saw this thing uh, well you've see, already seen it in action you've seen it blow up a village you know this is uh, this is a bit of a mean machine and I guess it could be used for good too but you know the one in my video that was a pretty nasty one okay so what do we have here well I've set up a firing range this will show us the range of the guns, the TNT cannon. So what we see here, every 10 blocks I've made a marking, all the way out to 100 at the end. So before I shoot, let's actually let's go inside. We'll have a look at the inside. So I've been using the controller, but the controls are, well, you can do everything I do with the controller with the uh, controls in here. So now for the shooting. Well, I've got two levers up here and You'll also notice these Nixie tubes. So unlike uh, in my attack helicopter video, uh, the Nixie tubes here, uh, well, that helps us find the range. So the range, yeah, you can control how far to shoot. So right now it's at zero. If I flick this, we'll shoot. And see, we're out to about 30, 30 blocks. So this lever is connected to a chain gear shift right here. So, um... Yeah, so that will actually increase the speed to the fan that goes through a nozzle that controls how far our explosives go. All right, let's uh, crank it up a little bit. Let's go up to well, let's go up to three. Let's see how much further this gets us. All right, that's a little bit. So that's about maybe 35 blocks. We crank this up to well, let's go up to 10. Let's see how far that gets us. That's about 40 blocks out, actually. That's pretty good. And, I mean, of course, we can crank this all the way up to 15. So that's, by the way, the, the speed controller is running at 64. And when it goes to 15, well, we're doubling the speed. So it's as if we had a speed controller at 128. All right, so let's see that. Okay, so we're out to about... We're at about 60 blocks with this. So this thing has a range of roughly 60 blocks, which is pretty far. That's uh, better than my attack helicopter anyway. And I think pretty good for what we have with just fan engines, you know, uh, fan blowers. So there's still room for improvement here. I could actually make this go up to, um, well, 256 of the max rotational speed. So I could probably get out to uh, 100 if I had more... Um, Tideborne power, but it's already quite a few uh, fan engines powering this, so I would have had to uh, double the amount of uh, engines in there, which would take up quite a bit of space. So this gives us a visual of the range, right? So, so anything in here, you know, we can, we have a bit of, uh, 
I guess, uh, flexibility when it comes to targeting, which is kind of neat. So um, that's uh, that's how the uh, range control works. So if we go in here, we can see a bit of the mechanism. So it's the same on both sides. They're two independent systems. Um, basically, there's a... Oh yeah, so an important thing is I can walk without this shooting. Because if you walk with, or you move a dispenser that has an item in it, it's going to try to shoot it out. If you try to walk and have TNT come out, you're, it's going to blow up your build. It's going to shoot TNT and it's not going to work properly. So uh, it's very important to not have any TNT in here. So how do I accomplish that? Well, there are hoppers here that have a redstone torch next to them. A redstone signal will stop a hopper from transmitting material. So the material is stored in the hopper. The redstone torch stops it. What I have here is a, a redstone receiver. Uh, so what happens is when I flick this lever, this will actually allow the TNT to go into the dispenser. I then have an oscillator circuit here with a delay, which will, um, yeah, I can show you in action actually. See, it's shooting and every time it shoots, every time it flickers, well, it tries to shoot out a uh, piece of TNT. Then once I turn it off, it continues for a little while, uh, to just to make sure that the dispenser is completely empty. So I've used, have I used up all the TNT? Yeah, there's still some left. Okay, so I'll, I mean, I've been walking and it didn't shoot, but what I'll do is actually I'll show you something else that this can do. So right here, I've got a piston with a block. So what happens is that block is holding the, I guess the cabin, to part of the main structure. So what's going to happen when I flick this lever, and I know it's slow, but this is going to be something we're going to be doing very often. Now we're disconnecting it. So that allows the top part to rotate independently. So we can do stuff like, actually, if I turn this now, only the top is going to part. Only the top part is going to turn. The bottom stay the same. And it's taking a while to uh, place. Okay. That's something I've noticed on this build. Okay, and I can't get out, so... Uh, yeah, that's... That's good. That's, uh... So... <laughs> so, now, uh, the walker is facing one way, and the turret is facing the other way. So, actually... Now, what we can do with this is... I mean, we can... Now we can shoot, walk forward, shoot again, walk forward. So if we've got like a target that's big, right? We can kind of strafe it, right? We can kind of, uh, yeah, there we go. Get a bit more of a wide area of effect going. So that's something, uh, that's something neat that this thing can do. All right, so if we get back in here, what I'll do is I'll face the, I guess, the right direction again, just to get everything lined up back together. Then I'll engage this, I guess you can call this like a mechanical clutch. I know a clutch is something that exists already in Create Mod, but that's for rotational energy, and this is for uh, keeping together uh, different segments. Okay, so we went over the firing system, this, uh, I guess, the range controls. Um, is there anything peculiar here? No, not really. It's basically just the same uh, um, fan engine setup that I have in most of my builds. I, uh, you know, it's, it's a good design that I like. It works. I'll show you guys the legs. Oh, yeah, so the turning mechanism is the same thing in most of my builds I've used this in my airships just two sequence gear shifts one for right one for left and um, so actually maybe I can show you the, the bearings because this this thing has a bit of complexity in the bearings so actually how do I show you without breaking this uh, well okay what I'll do is I'll just ah so see so we have this bearing here and this bearing here is the bearing that keeps the top portion from just flipping over. So you see how the top portion, the cabin stays 
I mean, stays upright while this part that's turning there is flipping over. Well, that's what that bearing's for. That's why we need that bearing. If the top part did not turn, let's say there was no turning, well, we wouldn't need this bearing, but I mean, we want it to turn, so it's you gotta have that bearing. These face-to-face -face bearings allow the legs to walk forward without flipping the opposite leg. So if that was not there, so yeah, so if that wasn't there, the opposite side leg would just flip over and it would not be nice at all. So um, yeah, so this thing I decorated with some, uh, these are Scorchia blocks. Um, I think they look, uh, they fit the sinister look pretty well. So it's uh, kind of mean looking. It's got this, uh, I use some ornate, um, some ornate windows with some iron bars. So this thing looks, uh, ready to uh, fight, ready to blow up your stuff. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mean machine, I think, anyways. So, uh, so yeah, so that's my uh, destroyer mech. It's the first uh, real walker, I guess, I made. My first serious, I guess, uh, walking design. So it's, uh, it's pretty fun. I love it. I love how realistic it looks. I love how, I mean, I love <laughs> fully automatic TNT cannon. That's, uh, that's a lot of fun. So, uh, there you have it. So um, I'm going to include a schematic in the video description. And as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my video.